Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the front office show. It's a sad day. I'm in a somber mood. I have to wait till October to see Lakers basketball again. I I feel like I need some funeral music or, or something at, at this point. Um, but we do have a lot to talk about on today's show. Somehow, some way, we will persevere, we will carry on, and we will get through it. Because we do still have a lot going on around the NBA. Make sure you guys do subscribe to the NBA front office show. We are normally, I am anyway, normally much more more peppy than, than this. But the Lakers, tragedy striking last night. Yes, there it is. There it took is. me a minute to find it. So sad. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh. Though. Keith, I don't I don't know what I'm more sad about right now. Am I more sad that the Lakers are are down are, are done? Are they out of the, that they're out of the playoffs? Or I'm more sad that now I gotta find stuff to talk about for the next like six weeks before the draft. That's that's gonna be challenging too over on the over on the Lakers Nation side of things. Um no, actually this team, this team is the gift that keeps on giving. They always have stuff going on. There's always something happening, and that's yeah. uh we'll get into some of that today. Um, where do you want to start? with all of it because there's an insane amount of stuff going on right now. Yeah. I mean, I guess just quick wrap up of yesterday. Uh, we saw the seasons come to the end for the Lakers and the Pelicans, both uh -huh. uh, Pelicans get swept, uh, not an overly competitive uh, series. Game one was really good. Game four was okay. Uh, but the thunder really took care of business for the most part in, in a way that was surprising. I, I think, we, I know we both picked the Thunder, especially with Zion being out, and I know most people did, but I don't know if a lot of people thought it was going to be a sweep. Like, I, yeah. I still think people thought New Orleans might get one or two in this series, and, and then they, they moved on. Uh, and then the Celtics, the, the Heat are now just like a shell of themselves. I know, I know you've been busy with Lakers stuff all day. Jaime Jaquez is now out too. Uh, for them, so they're not they they already Jimmy Butler's already been ruled out. Uh, they announced Terry Rozier and Hawkes will both miss game five in Boston mm -hmm. tomorrow. So if the Celtics don't close it out in five, quite frankly, that's an embarrassment now. Yeah. Like, fine, the Heat got the one game where they shot like you shot the lights out, and it was what it was, but get this thing closed out. Like, I they they their exposure is down to like five or six guys really that he wants to play because Duncan Robinson. Is dealing with a back injury, not moving well. He doesn't really want to play him. Kevin Love, he puts him out there for about two to three minutes each half just to give Bam Adebayo a little bit of a breather. And right. that those those have been disaster minutes. So Boston needs to get this done. We're going to get into Boston's big injury in a minute. And then, uh, yeah, the Lakers uh, there. And I think that's probably where we go next because there was, you know, very weird situation. So weird. Uh, I don't know how many people were uh, reacting to this like we were in the moment uh, on social media. And I know you guys were live on your mm -hmm. uh, post game YouTube show, but at about what it was probably about one in the morning or so, I think in, well, it was probably a little earlier than that, maybe around 1230 uh, yeah. Lakers reporters started tweeting Lakers are doing exit interviews tonight. So we're going to talk to, everybody on the roster tonight which is not normal post game normal no. post game in the playoffs it's here's three or four guys and maybe if a reporter has a good relationship with another guy they may be able to grab them for a minute or two but it was darwin hams but basically everybody but rob palinka spoke last night uh you know, all the players on the roster that anybody would care to talk to um had had their their piece to say about it and it's it's very very odd that is normally a a day or two after uh the season kind of thing ends and and we had a lot of stuff come out so I'll, you're you're the lakers guy I'll let you pick where we think we should start oh and not to mention we also had the very clearly uh pre-written waiting for the final buzzer to sound right. of the season article that dropped within minutes after that basically said uh darvin ham's getting fired we just we're being a slightly more kind and not firing him while he's still on the court, like we did yeah. Frank Vogel a couple. Oh, years the ago. the article I broke the whole thing down for Lakers Nation. It just skewers Darvin Ham. I mean, yeah. it's 
Yeah. Um, if let's just start there. So Darvin Ham out, out with Lakers question mark. I, I think the question mark is going to disappear real soon. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's coming. I, I think that's coming. That's going to happen. I don't see him sticking around. And th- I think it's justified. I mean, there's plenty of reasons. We, we've talked about it too. Like anytime a team doesn't succeed, the head coach is going to take a lot of flack and that's, that's sports. That's not NBA. That's not yeah. Lakers. That's all sports. It's the way that it goes. But the stuff that's come out is particularly damning. Um, the stuff about the players feeling like they had to win in spite of their coach and things like that. Like that's just, that, that's not going to work. Um, so I would be surprised if they don't move on from him. Um, I did think it was it, like the timing. It was, those they, I think they waited for him to exit the podium and then hit the publish yeah. button on the article, like, because they did. And so to me, I went, Oh my gosh. Like they probably Shams probably got word like, Hey, we know you've got this, but after what happened with Frank Vogel, do not publish this <laughs> yeah. until after Darwin's done talking and, and all of that, because they don't, because otherwise that, that everybody's phone's going to go off. People in the room are going to start asking Darwin questions about it. So I think they waited until after he got off the, so you didn't wind up with Frank Vogel getting informed that he was being fired as the Lakers coach by the media because the Woj bomb broke <laughs> as he was doing his post game presser. That's they didn't want that to happen. But so they waited until like, right as he finished talking to hit send on that. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I think the uh, Darvin Ham, yeah. I I think last year he deserved a pretty big chunk of the credit for that team rallying the way they did, especially considering they had so many injuries last year mm-hmm. to key guys, million – uh, you know, LeBron missed time, AD missed time, like the main dudes who drove that team. He also very quickly got them kind of reformed and built a real identity after the trade deadline. You know, that's not an easy thing to do because when you make major change like that. And I think, I don't know that he got quite enough of the credit for that, despite some obvious fail, failings and missteps and things he needed to learn as a first time head coach. And then this year, I think it almost was a little, I know probably not in Lakerland because I know, I mean, I, people have been calling for his job since October, uh, Mm -hmm. but it, it, I I think on a, you know, league wide national level, there was some, uh, you know, comment out there of, I don't think people fully picked up and realized um, with that. So uh, with, with that, but yeah, I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think he's gone. This screams very much can't change all of the players. So we'll change the coach and hope that that solves things. Even if there's probably going to be plenty changing of the players coming here too. Oh yeah. Big changes are coming. We know that, uh, that that's clear. The writing's on the wall with all of that. It's going to be a busy summer for the, for the Lakers. I think ultimately with Darvin, it comes down to this, you know, if you want to, you want to take all the stuff about the players thinking they have to try to win. And despite him, um, the, the, the changing rotations, the not not banking on the consistency from last year, the chemistry from last year, and mixing things up, giving way too much leeway to the guys that he's coached before in Torian Prince and, and Cam Reddish instead of D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves and, and benching those guys, all this stuff. Even if you want to take all of that and just flush it, just forget about all of that, the bottom line is Darvin Ham is supposed to be a head coach where every player wants to run through a brick wall to play for the guy. And he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that yeah. with this team. So he's not known as an X's and O's guy, right? He's not, he's known as the motivator, as the guy everybody wants to play for, as the guy everybody's going to give 100% for. If that is not there, then what are you doing? And, and I think it's pretty clear that's that's not there with this team right now. Yeah, well, yeah, de- definitely. And you... It felt like it, this. I promise I'm not giving like a backhanded compliment to try to be snide and silly because I thought a lot was made of the whole closest four game sweep ever last year. Very clearly, the Lakers are not a bad team and not far away. You don't yeah. push the Nuggets two straight years despite losing 4 0 and 5 1 or 4 1 rather. You, you don't push them the way they did if you're a bad team. And this is not a a Nuggets team that was just completely took their foot off the gas. I, I think they definitely played some of the first halves of this game a little bit with a, we just got to get to the fourth quarter, but yeah. that's kind of been their MO all season. And to, to be honest, and 
it's hard to argue because they win more than they lose. And they're generally right. Like just get us to the fourth quarter within striking distance and we'll win. Um, but I think it is, you're, you're at a point with that's where the margins become so important. And the timeout usage, which was kind of odd last night, finally used all of this. Timeout. And I know there's all that mess with that final timeout. I thought law Murray did the best job of breaking that down because he went to the actual rule book and pulled yeah. like, this is what happened. Part of it was, it was the uh, mandatory timeout that they would have had to have taken there. So that's part of why they lost it. It wasn't just the second challenge, but that was part of it too. There's a whole, there's like a, if this, then this, or this, then this right. kind of breakdown on that, but whatever. But the main thing is used all his timeouts and then down, what was it down two with, and then didn't have a timeout. With, yeah. yeah, didn't have a timeout left to set up a play. So, like, that's kind of funny because this was a guy who like, regularly ended games with two timeouts in his right. pocket. So, you know, that is what it is, right? Um, but I think it was weird rotations with Austin Reeves. Like, by the mm -hmm. time we got to the end of that uh, series, it was like by the time a playoff series is wrapping up, the both teams kind of know. These are our seven, eight guys. Sometimes it's five or six guys. And I think the Lakers should have known and they didn't play Reeves um, as much as he should have played 40 plus minutes. And mm -hmm. we haven't heard any reason yep. why he couldn't um, do that. You know, there was nothing. I get it. If it was like, Hey, he's, he's hurt and he can only handle 30 minutes a game or whatever. But so that was weird. So yeah, I think it's just time to move on reset player wise. Um, we're not, we're going to spend a lot of time probably talking about oh, a lot yeah. of stuff here. You've done a lot, I know, today. Um, it was like every five minutes, it felt like a new video uh, was <laughs> going up from you I've, today. I've gotten three out so far with another one that's <laughs> that's ready for, for our yeah. channel members. But but yes, so, it's it's been a busy day. Yeah, and that, and that's with cramming in a little bit of sleep because I, I know my last text from you came in at about 2.45 this morning, Eastern mm -hmm. time. So I know you were, uh, it was oh, like night. I was nowhere close to bed at that point too. <laughs> I mean, I figured, yeah. I figured you weren't, weren't close at that point. So I, um, but a couple of things that came out, LeBron was asked, are you, are you basically yeah. are you coming back to the Lakers? And he kind of said, I'm not going to answer that right now, right. but very much with a smile on his face. When you yeah. saw just the quotes, it looked way worse than if you saw the video of him. And that's just, LeBron controlling the process. Like, this is what he does. Yeah. He's not going to tell anybody right now. He probably he knows what his leverage if he says, Oh, I'm definitely coming back exactly. right now. He's not going to do yeah. that. He wants them to yeah. use their draft picks and stuff to trade and make the team better for next season. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Whether it is because there's been stuff of maybe the Lakers will draft Bronny. So, mm -hmm. you know, and that's fine. Whatever. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Who knows? Only time will tell with that. But whether he wants to use his leverage that where he wants to use his leverage to, hey, go sign player X that I know will come here or whatever. He's not going to give that up by saying I'm definitely in the fold today. Right. Because if the Lakers come back and say, hey, we're not no more. You have no input. Like. Then maybe LeBron is like, All right, then I'm out of here. Like I'm going right. somewhere else. So he's not going to tell you that today. I think the other one that was interesting was D'Angelo Russell. Um, mm -hmm. Also, uh, D'Lo, come on. We, you don't need to do the whole interview in third person. Like that was a little weird. Um, you know, that one comment. That of was weird. The, the one comment. had a hell of a year or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, but I, that part made me laugh. Um, but he basically said, Hey, I know I have some leverage and he does. And it's funny because I saw, I've seen all day long people saying, what leverage does this guy have? He sucks in the playoffs. If the Lakers don't want him, let him go. It's not that simple. Mm -mm. If he just walks, you've now lost that salary slot. Cause you cannot replace him. Yeah. They'll have enough to get a non taxpayer MLE signing very likely, yeah. but, but you're that's not it. getting a low level player. Exactly. You're not getting, you're not getting a player as good as he is. Playoff failings aside, he still was very good for them in the, the regular season. I said this when they re-signed him. In LeBron and AD stayed mostly healthy this season, but in a world where LeBron and AD missed time, you need guys like D'Lo to win regular season games because you could throw him the ball when those guys mm -hmm. are out. He can get you 45 and a win. I mean, he did it in Boston 
I don't remember what he scored, but he was a big part of them getting that win, if I remember correctly, when a bunch of other guys were out. So now we're at a spot with D'Lo where if he walks, all right, that's gone. It's the player and the production is gone, but also the roughly $20 million salary slot is gone. So that's yeah. one where hopefully somebody wants him bad enough that it's let's try to work a sign and trade and recoup something of value uh, with, with this. So that's that's the going to be an interesting spot too. So, yeah, I mean, well, we, we that's the other part of it though, right? Sure. Is that there has to be a market for him. Correct. And that's going to be the, the question. Is there is, is there a team out there? He has leverage 100%. If if no team, like if the Spurs are not interested, if the Magic are not interested because they're looking elsewhere, then it starts to become, hmm, where does he wind up that could pay him enough to where it would be a threat to, you know, that he would walk with. Or it needs to be a credible threat. He's got to have at least at least one team out there to credibly threaten the Lakers that I'm going to walk away for nothing, so you better give me more more years or what a player option, whatever it is he's trying to yep. get. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on is what exactly does that market look like for him? But yeah, he, he, I mean, this is what we do. And this is why people were so upset at the trade deadline. Why would you try to trade D'Lo or, or whatever, you know, people were upset about them shopping him and stuff. No, they, you, they had, it had no regard to what he was doing on the floor. It was all contractual because you knew if you waited till the summer, then this was going to flip. And I don't think they had a deal in place or a deal that made sense to trade him. But now this is the, the the downside is that for the team perspective anyway is that over the summer now D'Angelo Russell ha- does have the leverage. Can he get extra salary because of that? Can he get an extra year on a contract or something? Could uh, I certainly don't think he's going to pick up the eighteen point seven million dollar player option. The Lakers would love that if he did, but I don't think he's going to do that. So um, they're going to be in a really tricky spot with D'Angelo Russell and trying to walk a fine line because even if if they don't think he's the guy for them moving forward, they either have to find a sign and trade, which is really complicated trying to work that out, or you have to sign him to a new deal and then hope that it's not a new deal that would be considered a bad contract come December because they'll probably just look to trade him at that point. I have a feeling this is probably going to be the first of many D'Angelo Russell conversations you and I will have over the next couple of months here um, ahead of free agency, by the way, free agency opens roughly two months and one hour from now as we're recording this. So that's kind of fun, I guess. Um, You know, so that's uh, something. Um, But we, a couple things with this, I'm not going to repeat because I echo everything you said there. Here's the other two things I will add with this is if, D'Angelo Russell leaves, like just straight up leaves, and the Lakers are going after insert 30 to 40 to $50 million star X, Trey Young, Donovan Mitchell, whoever sure. it is that people are, you know, got their eyes on. That means it's got to be Rui Hachimura and Austin Reeves. Mm-hmm. Almost has to be. They just don't have the matching salary otherwise to do that and it's sure could you do something where you do a d'angelo russell sign and trade into a move to acquire somebody else yeah but then again that as you stated that means that team needs to want to have him or the lakers are let's say it was going to cost two picks to acquire the player they're willing to throw in a third pick to say hey you got to take d'angelo russell i that that seems slightly less likely to me to be the way this plays out. So we'll, we'll see, you know, we're going to probably hear more and more about this over the next roughly two months. Uh, Mm -hmm. He has till June 29th to make his decision on his, uh, on his option. So that's the kind of the date we're waiting on uh, to find out, but yeah. And if he picks it up, it's clearly, I would be shocked if it is not as a, Hey, I'm picking this up because I'm getting traded somewhere yeah. I'm okay being anyway. And then I'll work it out with that team down right. the line and we'll, we'll figure it out together. Last thing, because I had this question of, he had the no trade clause this year that he negotiated away. The question people were asking me is, if he picks up his option, doesn't he then get another no trade clause or does that 
negotiated away, still stand. It actually doesn't exist at all because by mm -hmm. picking up his option, that turns it into a two-year contract Correct. and that only exists on a one-year contract. So it's a weird, very much a uh, technicality, but a very, very important technicality. So just there's no no-trade clause for D'Angelo Russell if he picks up his option or if he doesn't uh, pick it up, then – then he's just a free agent at that point. He obviously has agency and what happens moving forward. So yeah, there's a, a bunch of other option guys. We'll, we'll get into that. I am sure, you know, over the next couple months, we're, we're going to talk a lot about all that stuff, but wanted to cover off on the Lakers. There's, you know, even beyond the connection of you covering the team, they're one of the biggest franchises in the league. They have major decisions being made starting soon ish so yep. we're gonna cover it so if everybody is gonna scream and yell all you talk about is the lakers yeah celtics guy loves to definitely talk <laughs> lakers. like that's that's my favorite thing to do <laughs> well and, and you know just to, to put a bow on all this stuff then we'll get to your celtics uh as far as lebron goes it sounds like the lakers are willing to do whatever it takes to keep lebron um con contract wise it sounds like they're already telling him like what do you want name it yep. just tell us what you want and we'll give you that um they're open to drafting brawny if that's what it requires i don't i would imagine they probably wouldn't be willing to give up the 17th pick to do it but maybe they're they've got like the 56 pick or, or something like that they could do something there but um yeah I, it sounds like they are all in on keeping lebron they're not looking to to see him walk away or anything like that and from what rich paul said recently it sounds like lebron wants to play probably a couple more seasons in the nba so um, I think he probably winds up staying with the Lakers, but we'll see uh, ultimately what happens. I think LeBron is not going to reveal that, though, until the team does the stuff he wants them to do in terms of adding players and, and things like that for, for next season. And hiring a coach, right? Because yes. he's going to want some mm -hmm. level of say, which is also, right? He, that's and Everybody makes this a LeBron thing. That is every that's single every star. superstar franchise yep. guy on any team they get they they get say does does he get some more yeah well whenever he does retire he might retire as the greatest player of all time of course he's going to get more say than most other people yeah. and it's not like lebron's just hanging out he was awesome last night and i have i trevor i can't tell you personal feelings wise on a player anybody i have done more 360s on than lebron <laughs> in my entire he's life because Spin it I, around. I loved him when he came into the league. I thought it was awesome. I was a hundred percent in that he was going to be really good. By the end of his Cleveland time, and when he went to Miami, I was out. I was like, I am done on this guy. I hope he fails. Like, I want this whole thing to fall apart. I mm -hmm. was completely out. By the time he went back to Cleveland and was winning those, those pushing and won that title in Cleveland, I was fully back in. Then it was like, oh, man, we're going to jump again, and now you're going to the Lakers for very obvious reasons. I was kind of out again, and now I'm completely back in again on LeBron. You know, I, I just, I, I said this last night. I tweeted this. I grew up on Bird and Magic, and then was basically really raised understanding the game on MJ, and that flowed right into LeBron. It's shocking that this is my favorite game in the world is NBA basketball. Like that's like, I, I don't know how people couldn't fall in love with it when that was, you know, if you're my age, that's what you had. Yep. Like, it's just, it really is, you know, unbelievable. And I, I am trying to, you know, we're not, I don't know how many more years of games like last night we have two, three, whatever it is, but I really want to appreciate them because it's like, he, he's just so special. Like we're, we're not, we're not going to see this again, somebody into 20 plus years playing at this level. We've never seen it before. We're yeah. not going to see it again for, I'm going to guess 10 to 15 years because maybe, maybe like Wemby or Anthony Edwards or somebody does it, but we're 15, you know, 20 years away from that even being a thing for those guys. So, you know, who, who knows, you know, we'll, we'll, when we're doing our front office show in 2044, we'll, We'll discuss if Wemby has reached LeBron's uh, level. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would that would that be something? We're still still doing this show, still uh, still talking. We, by that point, the salary cap would be like I don't know, it'd be one billion or something, yeah. probably more than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> more than that. Um, 
All right, let's get over to your your Celtics. Uh, Christoph Porzingis hurt, and it was just announced he is out for Game Five. Yep. Um, so he'll right be out of the strain, which is a calf strain. Um, yep. So I believe it's the same thing. Giannis is as I believe is in his left uh, calf, but it's the same thing. But we we don't. They didn't release anything. Nothing came out normally. Right, major player gets hurt. They, the next day they have an MRI and one of the reporters gets the, you know, MRI results showed a grade one, grade two, grade three sprain, strain, whatever it showed a tear. We didn't get that. Uh, we just got the Celtics injury report, which is Chris Apps Porzingis out for game five, uh, right solely a strain. So we don't know the level or the severity. All I know is extremely thankful. That's all it is because Non-contact guy pulls up, looks at the back of his leg, and we all go You're the same place. Achilles. It's is this an Achilles? Did the Achilles pop? What is it? Boston has been extremely cautious with him all year. I I would guess it's pro- unless this is extremely mild. I would guess we don't see him much in the second round. Yes, I'm counting my chickens before they hatch. That think they're going to get through to the second round. I already said that earlier. Um, and they should, otherwise it's a massive failure. Um, but I'm going to guess we don't really see too much of him in the second round. And it'll be, let's hope he can get back for what Celtics hope is conference finals and beyond. Yeah. And so it's a matter of just getting him healthy and getting, and again, the Miami heat or the Eastern conference is barely, barely existing right now. Essentially it's the Knicks and the Celtics, everybody else well, is either hurt or the Knicks at this point. Like we're going to right? get into them They're... in a minute here too. They just lost another guy for this. Yeah. It's, everybody is just this turn off the injuries already, please. Right? <laughs> They're yeah. crazy. Um, but uh, with Christoph Porzingis that I think they're going to be able to rest him up a bit until the second round. And, uh, and then we'll see what that looks like. And then we also saw Brad Stevens get executive of the year and well-deserved. Uh, I-, I was thinking about this the other day, Keith, if, if Milwaukee knew, and maybe they did, if Milwaukee knew Drew Holiday was probably going to wind up going to the Celtics, do you think they would have not done the Lillard trade? I, I think they would have done it, but I think they might have tried to rope a, another team in to send Holiday to as part of the trade. So Holiday yeah. never really goes to Portland, right? It would be, hey, Clippers, because if Clippers wanted him badly, we'll pull you in and you'll just get him now. But by all accounts, when that was even discussed, the Suns and the Trailblazers were like, well, hold on, because Portland was like, I don't know that I want to take a bunch of the Clippers cast off contracts, which turned into what they essentially traded for James Harden. Later, there was a little bit of, well, wait a minute, we're not necessarily. So I think they would have tried a lot harder to do that, but they had to know that was a very real possibility. Uh, yeah. yeah, Boston's just going to turn right around and go get him. But there's only so much you can do when you're trying to trade for, you know, if you want to get it done. And remember, we got all that very in-depth reporting of how secretive those trade talks were, right. which they did a pretty good job on. Like, nobody really had that. In this day and age, yeah. And it was, um, it was really interesting to get all the way – into all of that. So my guess is you start pulling in a fourth team. Now, what I wonder is Phoenix, you couldn't find a way to just grab them yourself. Like think of how many problems that would have solved for that team. If they had just taken drew holiday themselves, but right. they clearly wanted to get, get the big in Nurkic and yeah. Yeah. And play the way they played and all that. But that's, that's a bunch of what ifs, but yeah, Brad Stevens, not surprised to so if everybody is clear too. This this is the one uh, postseason award of like the major awards that the media does not vote on. This is voted mm-hmm. on by the peers, um, and the rule is you, you can't vote for yourself um, or anybody in your organization. <laughs> Although, otherwise, the, it would be a thirty. It would be a thirty way right, tie. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or, or or it'd be really telling <laughs> if like right. one guy didn't get didn't get a vote, and it was like. Oh man, he even knows he did a bad job. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> which would be really funny. Now I kind of want to see that happen. Right. Um, but yeah, it's uh yeah, so and he, he won by a pretty decent margin. And I think that's just a level of respect for hey, he pulled off at least one really gutsy trade with the smart trade for Porzingis, 
worked out perfectly to this point. I'm going to lock, knock very lightly on, on my desk here so the dogs don't flip out. And hopefully he's okay for the games that really matter coming up. Um, but, yeah, and then the holiday trade was kind of the, the – it, it sounds weird to call it the cherry on top of the Sunday. It was more like the hot fudge because, like, like he's he's a little too important to just be the the cherry sure. on top of the Sunday. But, yeah. I don't know. Really, cherries are pretty, are pretty awesome. I don't know. Are, are Do you like cherries? I like the cherry, but, but it's yeah. like when you use that analogy, it's like one cherry gets put on top. I, I've been known to be like, hey, throw like five or six cherries on top of that. Cause yeah, I, right? I don't get a lot of stuff. Like I don't get a Sunday that's like 87 toppings on it. Like I have my couple different things I like and, and that's what I stick with. And then, but I'll, I, I would, if I, if I'm doing one like that, then I'm like, yeah, there were a couple extra cherries on there just, just because. It's a way to do it. It's a way to do it. I mean, I, I can't have a Sunday in general, but but uh, the the cherry uh, the cherry part of it sure I'll take I don't mind it when they put when they put a, a cherry on top of something it's man, pretty I don't good know how you do it man I it, it, if if it comes down that I can't do ice cream like we we ain't making well, it to 2044 uh, front office show we we're only making it to 2025 <laughs> front office show if I get that it, news it's like my daughter doesn't understand how we lived without tablets and without the internet and stuff like that. Sure. Cause she doesn't know like, but I'm trying to explain to her like, well, when I was a kid and it's, you know, the eighties, I'm not sitting around going, man, I wish I had a tablet. We had no idea what that was. We had no idea what we were yeah. missing out on, on having sure. that's, that's, that's ice cream for me. I don't know what I'm missing out on, on, cause I just can't have it. So it's not, I'm not sitting around pining for ice cream. Cause I have no idea. And like people say, it's great. I'm like, the last time I had ice cream, I was like, I don't know, probably 10 or something like that. Oh, and, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's not a thing. So I, it, I'm not sitting around thinking, woe is me. I, my existence is over because I can't have ice cream. Cause I don't, I don't know what I'm missing. Yeah. You see, you're, you're fortunate that way. I know what I would be missing and how much yeah. I love it. It's like family basketball. And then it might be ice, ice cream. cream next. Like that's like my, <laughs> I love ice cream, man. It's like, it's like my, that's like my go-to thing. If like, I want something sweet, I've been trying not to eat as many sweets. I've been trying to cut mm -hmm. down a little bit and it's a, unfortunately the whole working out, thing, the playoffs just ruin everything because I'm up yeah. every night till like two in the morning and then I'm sleeping in later and my whole schedule's off the next day. So got to get back on track here. Thankfully that's more of a first round thing. And I mean, the West Coast, true West Coast teams are gone. Like, yeah. other than the Clippers, like, the Clippers are the last true West Coast team. So, we're going to probably get a handful of these seven, nine thirty uh, starts. And that's, you know, that's fine with me. I'm I'm all for it. I know a lot of people don't like it because they're still working and stuff or getting Too home early. or kids' activities or whatever. But for me, I'm all, I'm all about it because I mean, yeah. you know, it all wraps up a little earlier in the day. So, yeah. All right. What else we got? We've got uh, Kawhi out for game five. Although, yeah. uh, you know, every time we think, oh, the Clippers are in trouble, no Kawhi, they wind up winning. So I I can't say this is going to hurt them all that much because they still find out when you shoot 157% from three, that helps. <laughs> uh, but but Kawhi was uh, Ka Kawhi out for game five. Luca's banged up. Hopefully he's a go. But um, the boy, the Mavs need to win this one. I think the Mavs need to win this one more than anybody else does at this point in the series. They've got to get the win, uh, take back home court after they'd already stolen it, and uh, it go from there and then try to close it out in game six. To not get this one and then have to go win game six and game seven then on the road would be really tough. Yeah, yeah, it's – yeah, you – it, there, I don't remember what the number is, but it's some overwhelming number of whoever wins. It's like game eighteen percent of teams win Game Seven on the road or something. Yeah, something it, crazy it, like that. And it's whoever wins Game Five. It's like it, I want to say it's like seventy five percent or something. Yeah. Go on to win um, Game. Uh, this is per Woj. Celtics uh, center Kristaps Porzingis is expected to miss a minimum of several games with the. Like that doesn't have okay. a minimum of several games. What would be yeah. the maximum there? The rest of the season? Like that's the minimum important. is several games, the maximum is the rest of the well, I, but a minimum of several games, but you don't know when the well, next round is. I mean, I guess yeah. you do know when it's starting, but so he's not gonna play anymore against the Heat anyway. That's yeah, he's definitely out for the rest of this one. I don't think we see him in the second round either. That would be my guess. Is yeah. is probably gonna Boston, what you want to do now is wrap this up tomorrow against the Heat. 
Um, then hope Magic Cavaliers go seven. Let let that one drag out. Mm-hmm. So you're home. You've got your feet up. Porzingis is resting up, getting treatment, and then then you get after it. Maybe he can return later in that series, but if, if that drags out, that pushes everything back a little. And then Boston, hopefully you can get him back for conference finals. And I, yeah. I I don't mean this to be cocky, but they should get through the Cavaliers or the Magic without him. They've got enough yeah. front court depth. This is why you traded for Xavier Tillman at the trade deadline. No, he's not a Porzingis replacement. Horford will do that, do a lot of what Porzingis can do. A lot of it, not all of it. And then you ask more of Luke Cornett and Xavier Tillman coming off the bench and and hope you can manage through that. It's the big thing is you can't just say, Hey, Al Horford, you need to play 40 minutes a night now. He can't. You gotta get no. you gotta keep him under 30 ideally, and then hope that uh um Cornette and Tillman can come in and give you enough minutes. And both Orlando and um Cleveland, that's much more of a series for Tillman because they play double bigs, they play they're they're pretty physical, rugged team so you could kind of hey get in there man and mix it up like that's a good series for him so that that's where where I, i'm assuming this will go yeah yeah i agreed um okay well so there's a little bit of break we didn't use the button but that's a little bit of breaking news here on the show yeah. um all right let's get into some more injuries because yay uh, yeah. boyan bogdanovich out for the season he's done for for the knicks uh the knicks already without julius randall uh, that's not, and, and again, I, I, I've talked about before. I love this team. There's so much fun. Um, but these injuries, I think ultimately their lack of offensive firepower will be their undoing, but, um, this certainly doesn't help with that, that, that Boyan Bogdanovich is now done. Yeah. I, I think, um, this is tough. Cause this is like the double whammy for Bogdanovich. He's going to have uh, both foot and wrist uh, surgery. He he injured the wrist. He'd been playing with a left wrist injury for at least a little while. Uh, now he hurt his foot in game. What was that? That was game uh, four, um, mm-hmm. or game four, or game game three. One of the two. Um, uh, he got injured. Well, yeah, he only hurt played his... a minute game four, so that was okay. Had to so be... that was game four. Yeah, yeah. yeah I knew it was shortly after he'd come in. Mm-hmm. Uh, Production wise, not a huge loss for the Knicks. He hadn't played super well for them, but this is just one less guy they can have in the rotation now. Presumably, yep. Alec Burks is next up to play again. They have not been using him at all for weeks now, um, if not months. Uh, this was not a playoff rotation cut down. He had been out of the rotation early, but he's he's kind of the next guy up if they got to go to. And at some point. I get it. We all make the jokes. You and I do it too. Well, Tibbs will just play everybody else 45 minutes and call it good. We made that joke with Deuce McBride on the last show. Yeah. Um, they'll just play everybody 40 minutes and that's it. But at some point you need somebody who can come in and give you minutes or there's going to be foul trouble or someone's going to slightly roll an ankle and need to leave the court for 10 or 15 minutes of game time or whatever it is. And not having Bogdanovich is a loss for sure for for the, for the Knicks, I, they, they, they've got enough to keep winning and winning games. It's just, you're not trying to just win this, this round, right? If it's just win one more game, that should happen now. You're up 3-1, but you're trying to win the second round. And then you're trying to get into the conference finals and, and win there as well. And when you're doing it with six and a half players, hopefully Mitchell Robinson gets, gets back and now you're down, He's, you're at seven yeah. players. That's, that's tough. That's a, that is a tough ask to win three more rounds and get to where you want to be with, with that uh, kind of lack of depth. Well, who are you missing? If six or so? Could, well, I mean, are you assuming Precious Achua is just out of the rotation if Robinson's back? He doesn't play when Robinson plays. So right, so, okay, so that's where you're getting to six or so because yeah, Mitchell yeah. Robinson is a game time decision tonight, but Achua was yeah. getting minutes. But he, yeah, you're right. He's not going to get those minutes if, if Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, it's in a, there. So he it's, can't feel down. Like he can't yeah. play at the three on the right. wing like Bogdanovich could. So it's not, you know, he's really, they, they treat him like a backup five. Like so it's and a seven man rotation at this point. Yeah. So you're really, you're down. My guess is we see Burks, like give him some, now's the time, right? You've got a three, one series lead. You're at home. Home crowd will be fired up. They'll be behind him. Give Burks a handful of minutes in the first half. See what it looks like. If it looks okay. You go back to it in the second half and maybe you, you find, 
all right, we we've got this now. We've kind of got something else we could do. Mm-hmm. Maybe they do play play double big lineups where they roll out a Chua with Robinson or with Hartenstein. That's not something they've done. Uh, basically, since Randall's gone down, they pretty much said, "Hey, OG and Anobi, you're our four, and we're going to play like that." And Josh Hart, the you know uh, reincarnation of Charles Barkley as the small rebounding machine. Um, you just keep going that way. But yeah, it's a uh, it's just tough, man. Once you start losing guys and you're already at a thin rotation, it's it, it it's really hard to continue to get through because other stuff is going to come up, whether it's somebody right. else gets picked up or there's an illness or it's just foul trouble in a game. You're at some point you're going to need somebody else to go to. And Bogdanovich, as much as he wasn't playing great, you at least knew, all right, he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing out there. It will be in the right spots. Yeah, exactly. So – these injuries pile it up, but pile it up for a lot of teams, but that, yeah. that's brutal. Yeah. That's it's brutal. Um, it, These playoffs. I mean, just it's, it's insane. Like the yeah. star guys on all sides that are, you know, out. So just, just I brutal. blame load management. Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I don't I'm, know. Kidding. I'm kidding. Did you, did you see the magic Johnson tweet? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he blamed, he blamed load management for the Lakers struggles and, I think the the internet collectively went. What, what it was the Nick Young meme? Like the what? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't load yeah. manage anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe he was funny. blaming the lack of load manage. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that was it. I <laughs> load manage everybody. I oh, yeah, I mean, Magic's tweets are are they're they're something. They're a gift. They, he's they, a legend. Gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a legend, not for anything he taps out on no. his phone. That's for sure. That's well, and it's sure. come out right that he doesn't really do it. Like he tells somebody what his like thought is. I'm I think sure. That's come yeah. out that he doesn't. That's the way it is a lot with, with a lot of these guys. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and man. If but dude, 2044. I'm not writing my own tweets anymore either. Like, like when we're still yeah, that's doing just this it. show. So, I'm out. So think about this. Like, like you and me. Like if I if I want to do like my dear Darwin segment, I'm recording that. I'm editing that. I'm posting it to the 15 different platforms. I'm going to, I'm going to post it to all of that, all that kind of stuff. If I, if there's a gra- if I need to make a graphic for something, if I need to make a thumbnail, I'm making the thumbnail for, for the show. If Woj has some news that he's going to post and it comes out with this image from Woj and all that kind of stuff. He didn't make that. <laughs> he's yeah. got, he's got a team. He's got people that are, that are making that stuff. Uh, you and me, we're, we're still, uh, we're still grinding it out, doing everything all of all ourselves and, and making that happen. Uh, While imagine, doing not, grocery runs during the day. Exactly. And pick up and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. It's a, Magic, not so I, much. I, yeah, no, definitely not. I will say this, though. The job affords us the ability to do those things. Where For sure. Both of us previously would not have done those things. I mean, I'm at home at four o'clock in the afternoon when we started uh, talking about recording today. And it's, you know. There's no complaints. It's just, yeah, it's, it is funny when, cause I had said somebody was like, somebody one time was like, you should add a graphic to the salary tweets. And I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. Cause I'll, that I'll do that. Like, let me, let me just learn graphic design here real, real quick. Like, yeah. What do you, Microsoft paint? Is that good? We already have an account that does that NBA paint. They do it way better than I ever could. So no, right. Like it's, they, they, yeah, you, you're plus who needs a graphic for a bunch of numbers <laughs> that's like you, you just need to see the numbers so all that said site redesign on spot track i think it looks really good i think it mm-hmm. looks super clean uh we've gotten a lot of good feedback on it i will say this too if anybody is on there and notices anything wrong just send us a note you can you can tweet me my emails in my bio on twitter you can drop it in the show comments here promise i will try to do my best to look into it and find it Yes, I know the trade machine is not there. It is not priority right now, unfortunately. The site redesign is priority, but the trade machine will come back up and running and, and all that. But, you know, just for, breathe for a minute and, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there we'll, with all that stuff. But, yeah, well, a lot of good stuff coming. Very cool. Very cool. All right, I think last thing we've got today, and by the way, I like that it does the team colors at the top. That's pretty cool. Yeah, um, yeah. Surprisingly like not an easy Just thing either. Like, I... Like I learned, I, I've learned. Have, or have, have every page that. be a different color scheme? Yeah. yeah, I get, I get where that would be difficult. Yeah, it's so tedious that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, you have but, to really build it. But it's worth it because people notice, and I think people do enjoy that stuff. So yeah. Mm-hmm. 
All right, I think last thing we've got for today, the early entry list is out for the NBA draft. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, but we've got the NBA draft mock uh, mock draft that's up over on Basketball Bulletin. You really guys can fun. check that out. Put the link in the description down below. Yeah, I thought that that mock draft turned out great. I know there's going to be future versions of it coming out, but go check out the Basketball Bulletin, which is our Substack. Uh, the early entry list is out. Keith, there's like almost 200 names on it, right? Yep, 195 names, which I will read all of them now. Here we go. No, I'm not really going to do that. <laughs> it's like a commencement uh, here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they're yeah. graduating? Oh, like graduating, graduating class. Um, yeah, 195. A <laughs> little bit smaller than we've seen in recent years. Um, it used to be this list was pretty big for a long time because there was no guys could – could declare and undeclare and it was fine. Then, then there were some rules put in mostly on the NCAA side of you can only undeclare once. Um, so the list shrunk. Then they went back to, all right, you can, you can explore the process with, without an agent, you can yeah. do all this. And then we had the COVID years where that got kind of crazy. Now it shrunk back down. Part of the reason it shrunk back down. Some of the guys who are, if I'm on a, uh, I'm at Gonzaga, who I know is a national power, but a relatively small school. I can make a million dollars in ads in Spokane, Washington area because I'm a Gonzaga player and people, I'm, you know, I'm beloved there. I don't need to go be a second round pick or get a jump start right. on going and playing in Europe. So guy, we're going to start seeing uh, this is now getting more towards what it's supposed to be. Um, by the time it gets, it's 195 right now. That list is my guess is going to get cut a minimum by a third, and maybe even by like half. Um, I would not be surprised if we cut this list way down because now it's going to be the guys who really are like I'm done. Like I have nothing to be gained by playing another minute of college basketball. I'm going pro, or the international guys who are just uh, I'm ready to go to the NBA. So. Uh, but yeah, it's out there. I've I've retweeted it. It came out from the official NBA account as well. If you want to click on the list and see a bunch of guys who are on there, and some of the guys, people I'm sure are going to be like, didn't they announce this guy's transferring? And what right. a lot of players do now is they set up a transfer, but they go through the draft process just to get a sense of, oh wait a minute, I might be a late first round pick. I'm going to stay in the draft, or I might be a high priority second rounder, or just they get the feedback of. You got to shoot it better. You got to handle it better. You need to defend better. You need to work on your body, whatever it is. Then they get that feedback from the NBA teams and they can take that back as they work on it through whatever their final run through college is. So that's, yeah. that's out there. Go, go check it out. There was no, no major surprises of names on and not on the list. It was pretty much what we expected. Yeah, and keep in mind, guys can still withdraw and everything. It's yep. just it's it's where we're at right now in the in the process. And you know, of course, we're gonna have a lot more. We'll have to bring Bryce back on, Bryce Simon Absolutely. to help us out with our draft coverage. He does a fantastic job. And of course, you can get his stuff up on the basketball bulletin as well. Uh, but you know, the draft, it's gonna creep up on us. Like before we know it, we're gonna turn around and we're gonna be like, whoa. It's it's draft season. How did how did that happen? I know, like right now it feels like it's so far away, but it happens every year. It's like you blink and suddenly it's time for the draft. I almost died when I looked. I was mapping out our, we've got X amount of offseason previews to finish for spot track. We also want to do free agent specific previews, some rookie scale extension stuff. I, all the things I'd normally write at this time of year, we're just building a calendar. And I was like, there's eight weeks. That's it. There's eight weeks until the start of the offseason. The draft is a little bit earlier than that. So We've got, uh, yeah, it's, it is, yeah, it sounds like a long time and there'll be moments I'm sure for people like, like, you know, Pistons fans are like, good Lord, could we just start the summer already? Right. Um, you know, when your season's been over for months, but it is, yeah, it's, it, it will get here very, very quickly for sure. Yeah. Uh, that, that is going to happen. All right, everybody, make sure you do subscribe right here to the NBA Front Office Show on YouTube. Follow us over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts as well. Go check out the Basketball Bulletin, which is our, our sub stack. I'll put the link in the description. Thanks, everybody. Till next time, we'll see you and stay safe.